So then, on the court, and basketball in general, I don't know if you heard, but there are people who question your work ethic at times. So, I mean, what do you feel like that it's taken for you to get to be like one of the top players in the state, in the nation, in terms of like, time you put in? I mean, I've been playing basketball since I was four years old. I mean, that's pretty much all I really do. So, I mean, maybe I, I don't really do all the like workouts like most people do, like the sand dunes and like weight jackets and all that. I just go and I just shoot. And I don't really, I haven't really been lifting or anything, so I could see what they mean by that. But I just stick to what I know and what I've been doing. So then, I mean, it's obvious that you've been in contact with NBA stars, Tony Rose and Jamal Crawford. Yeah. So like, have they, do they reach out to you and do they ever give you any advice? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Jamal, uh, Brandon, Martell, Tom, Will Conroy, I mean, they just tell me little things like Martell would call and just like when things wouldn't be going the be like the greatest at Lakeside. He went to Seattle Prep and he would tell me all these stories like how, I don't know, things wouldn't be going his way, grades and whatnot, and just how to just, you know, just stick through it and it will work out. And I mean, it always helps, especially coming from people you like look up to and people like growing up, I mean, you didn't know them. And then now all of a sudden they're like interested in you. So, I mean, you have to take them into consideration. Yeah. So it seems right now too, with like you being one of the top players um, in the state that a lot of people are interested in you. Yeah. You know I mean? 10,000 almost Twitter followers. Um, so how do you deal with like, I mean, I'm sure you have like, a lot of fake friends, real friends, all that, like is that a, Fake friends, that's definitely a thing. Uh, I mean, I kind of, I'm kind of a loner, so I don't really, I'm not really out that much, or I just like stick to the little group, like my group of friends that I've always been with, and just chill at the house or their house. So I don't really have the little, like the opportunities for, I mean, for any of like the fake friends to like, I don't know, do anything or like have any experiences with them. But there's definitely like people I mean, that tweet at me like I don't know like they like they know me and stuff like this and that. But that's about it. But then in addition, you're going to be an athlete who obviously has a lot of different college options. A lot of D1 schools are looking at you. Um, so what are your biggest contributing factors in deciding where you go to college? It would have to be definitely the coach, their the teams like goals. How I mean how it doesn't. I'm not really worried about how good they are at that point, it's how good they want to be. I mean, like, before I came here, Lakeside wasn't really that good at basketball, and I, the coach told me that his goal was for us to be a state contender, and I mean, that played a big part in me coming here. On the college scale, like, I, I'm fine with the, I don't, like, it doesn't matter where it's at, I just want to go somewhere where I know I'm going to be successful and have a, uh, a good time playing. Yeah. So you mentioned like since you came to Lakeside, the program changed from one of the worst to one of the top three um, three teams in the state. Yeah. What do you think has been like the most important to that growth? The most important has been Peter French. Uh, you know, he, he's seven foot. I mean, he he's the most improved player I've seen in the state by far. I've been playing with Peter since sixth grade. We went to Washington Middle School together, and he was six seven in middle school. And picture that, I mean, I was about 5'9", and he didn't touch the floor. So you can imagine how, I mean, now he's starting team captain. He's grown, I mean, not, I mean, he's, like, grown as a player. And, I mean, without him, we wouldn't be anywhere we are. I mean, he, he changed it. Not, you probably won't see on stat books, he gets a lot of blocks, but he changes a lot of shots, which force a a lot of misses and fast break points for DeMarcus and I, but yeah. Yeah, so what do you like playing on such a talented team in general? Like, do you feel that your teammates make you a lot better? We just have, we have talent, but we have, there's a difference between having talent and then having talent that knows like their roles. I mean, you can have a bunch of guys that are good and just go out and want to do their own thing. And you, can have, you can have guys that are good and want to do what the team needs them to do for them to be successful, and that's what we have. So who's the most talented player you think you've played this season? I played this season? Yeah. Against in Seattle? Yeah. 
The most talented player I've played against would probably be probably be uh, DJ Finner or uh, or Marquise Davis from Beach. Marquise is like he's different. He like I mean he plays on Rainier Beach where he doesn't need to shoot every shot and he doesn't shoot that much but when he does shoot all the shots go in he got it he his vert's ridiculous so when he shoots when he jumps and you can test his shot he's jumping over you so every shot he takes it's like you're not there because if you put a hand up he's jumping 10 inches above where your hand is and then dj he's just i mean he's second in the state and scoring or whatever he's just i don't know he's just dj he calls himself little mamba on twitter he He's a grown man. He's bigger. And you can tell when he was playing against uh, his competition. He's just a man of us boys. Yeah, so then on the court, you see that you can do virtually whatever you want at times. Where do you see the need for the most improvement in your game? Most improvement? Uh, I'd say most improvement in my game, probably my explosiveness. I mean, I feel I can get by people or whatever, but when I get to the rim, if I, if I had more explosive than this, I'd be able to finish a lot easier. One last question. What is official? What is official? And home team, too. And home a team. A lot of people want to know. A lot of people want to know. Uh, home team is some something that Jamal uh, Crawford, uh, last NBA basketball player for Clippers, made up. And he started that with Will Conroy, who is an uh, uh, XU dub player who uh, just... He used to play for the Timberwolves. He leads UW in assist. They started this like, I guess, click. I guess whatever. It's like with just basketball players. I mean, it's just like none of the like, not just basketball players. Just like a, just like friends. I mean, you got, I mean, Brandon Royce from Clay's home team. Isaiah Clay's home team. He got a tatted like on his on his arms. You got, I mean, there's a bunch of dudes that. Playing home, it's just a, a group of guys. It's positive stuff, and then officials. That's my group. Uh, it actually started from uh, when uh, LOE was made, but it was called uh, Street Fam. And me and my friends, well, it was me. Me, I, I came up with an idea. I was like, all right, so we should make something up. And kind of refers to your last question. You were talking about like fake friends and stuff, and. Official when I think of official I think of like real like nothing not fake nothing like that So official is kind of just like a group is just like a full of dudes that just like want to succeed Like I said, I'm a I'm a homebody. So me and my friends just stick together and whatever. I don't know.